first of all, thank you for the introduction. So many times uh, you did a wonderful job there. However, <laughs> there is always a however or a but, right? However, I'm really, I, know, I don't know guys for you, but I'm always curious to see how do you go on stage or how do you go and present in front of a client or something or inside of your organization itself and you try to provoke that thought, let's kill PowerPoint. Let's not use PowerPoint in our organization whatsoever. I don't know how many times you try to do that in your life up until now, but trust me, it won't work out that easily. Unfortunately, you know, like <laughs> it is very unfortunate that we cannot kill PowerPoint or Excel for that matter. I don't know if you guys have heard that one. Many people are like really looking forward to kind of build another version, another Excel. And everyone is like, oh, now we are going to build that version of Excel and it will kill Excel. And I'm like, you have lost your mind completely. And especially the one that I really like is when somebody says to Apple, I don't know if you guys have used the numbers. There is an app on, uh, on Mac OS that's called Numbers. And they say Numbers is better than Excel. And I'm like, you also lost your mind completely. Uh, because if you're saying that, you obviously don't know what Excel is, right? So now we're talking about something else. How many of you have been here last year? Not here, but the last event. Okay, that is what? That is 20% uh, <laughs> more or less. So just to give you context of what happened last year. So last year, I showed you a lot of, not a lot, but quite some things. The first one that I showed you last year was called data zip leaks. And I showed you how data can leak out of a PowerPoint presentation. That is by you changing the extension of the file, of the PPTX file, to a zip file. Microsoft will push you and say, are you crazy? Are you OK? How are you with your health? You're going to say, I'm completely fine. Change the extension, and then you can unzip the whole presentation and extract a lot of its Excel files underneath. So that was one of the things that you saw last year. Then you saw something that was called data source, meaning that in the presentation context, when I see a slide or when one of our customers presents with a slide, by the way, the irony of all of that, the irony of a slide like that is that this all started here in this room 2016, so three years ago. And I don't know if you remember that story from last year when I said that there was a person here in this room in InterExpo Center, Sofia, who presented with a very beautiful slides. The slides more or less looked like this. However, the number there was not 80%, but 42%. And there was something that was missing. And someone where the camera right now is asked, where is the, this data coming from? And the speaker said, the data is coming from multiple resources. When you say, to an audience or to your boss that the data is coming from multiple resources, let's just put it this way. You have a problem. You just lost the trust in you. So there is no way for you to say that the data is coming from multiple resources. There should be a resource always, and that is something that's very, very important in presentations when you're presenting it. If it's not on the slide, just mention it. It's coming from the latest researcher of Forbes. Do I respect Forbes as your audience? Forbes as your audience? Sure I do. So I will trust that number, right? Don't miss that. Then we talked about action titles. When you are explaining data, when you try to convey a message, many times we see a chart that looks more or less like this. Everything that you are now going to see now in terms of charts is fake. Okay, so the data is fake. It's just for that event itself. So there is no source on that data, as you can imagine. So I see a lot of charts many times with titles like that, and you don't want that, especially when you want to convey a message very, very quickly. Because when I see a revenue per course or whatever, now you're asking me to analyze that. I don't want to analyze. I want to understand. And so just with a very simple switch, you can change the title and make it an action title or a summary title, or as many people call it, like different ways you can hear different type of state of terminology being thrown in that way of explaining a chart. That is something that many people are now starting to use. I would highly support you use that. That is one of the places where you can break the rules of a presentation and put in a whole sentence. 
right? A whole sentence to explain what the chart is actually conveying. And then we talked about animation. Uh, you guys didn't believe that it's that possible. <laughs> I did, it is that's what I was remembering. I remember that is when we talked about whether or not a table can be animated, right? And I showed you that it is completely possible because that table is completely a normal table that you can copy paste it from Excel, right? That you can copy paste from Excel. It is a living table. The important part is that it has to be a living table. It has to be alive. If it's a picture, it won't work. However, once you copy paste that chart, uh, not chart, but table, once you copy paste that chart on another slide, I don't know if you guys remember that one, but instead of pa just pasting it, if you go to the so-called paste special button, I showed you that if you use that one, the picture enhanced meta file, so you copy paste the table as a picture, which is kind of strange by itself, and then take a look at this, for those of you who haven't been here, if you ungroup that picture, which is actually a table, and you don't ungroup it once, but you ungroup it twice, you can later on animate it, which is kind of funky, right? <laughs> it is kind of funky. So the way you do, the way, by the way, you can see the animations here, actually not here, but here, right? So then, what I can do is, instead of going here, instead of going to this table, I can have something, I don't know, like this, for example. And I can say, up until I'm here, I can click, show you. I can click, show you. And then I can ask, do you, how many, thing, how many storytelling courses do you think we sold? We planned for two, but how many do you, do, did we really sell? Well, five, six, seven, no, no wrong, right? And I can animate all of that data in the way that I want. Again, by just copy-pasting the table and ungrouping it twice. Very important thing. Then we quickly go to, went through the animations. I showed you that every single chart can be animated. Now you're going to see some magic there also. Every single chart can be animated in the way that you want, right? By just clicking on the chart, go to the animations, and then the chart ch changes. And then I showed you some bad charts or ugly charts, or I call them because I live, I was born in a place, the Bulgarian people here will understand that joke, I hope. I was born uh, not in Sofia, but in a place very close to Sofia. Um, the, the city starts with the, yes, with P. <laughs> and so in that, in that city, in that town, the word, the, the word brutality uh, is just very popular. And that's why I, don't, I didn't even include the charts in my presentation. I go outside to remember, remind you that we were seeing charts like those. This is real chart. This is real chart. When we ask the person, obviously I removed some things from it, but this is real thing. Not me, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> this is another real one. Classics, right? <laughs> Classics. So this is another real one, right? And then I have an, another one for you, which is, by the way, a very interesting one. Let's see whether or not you will get the problem. Take a look. Take a careful look, because there's something wrong in that chart, and it's wrong for so many reasons, <laughs> right? It is wrong for so many reasons. And the worst part of it is the source. <laughs> so that's why we have to be a bit more careful with all of those things, with all of those things. Now, saying all of that, saying all of that, this year I want to show you something, something different. And I will go, I won't switch to the slides again, but I don't know how many of you know a brand, a fashion brand that's called Off-White. How many of you know that brand? One person, two, three, four. Okay, so that won't work. But these are not the, right? These are not the semicolons of fancy brand. What do I mean? I'm kind of disappointed uh, that I continue to see those type of charts going out there. This is obviously an old one, as you can imagine, but what is the problem with this chart? The source is Gartner, so it should be fine, right? But what is the problem with this chart? Where is my water? 
It is a 3D chart, but what else? Because it's a 3D, what happens? There is a problem with it, guys. Take a look carefully who is on stage. So the, propor the proportions are kind of, kind of wrong if you think about it, right? And take a look by, maybe it's a coincidence, right? Maybe it's a coincidence that 19.5 actually looks bigger than 21.2. And oh, by the way, 19.5 is actually by some chance Apple. <laughs> what a coincidence. You would say this guy went on stage and didn't know how to present, right? <laughs> he did it by mistake, right? <laughs> Trust me, he didn't, did that. he didn't do that by mistake. He did that very, very intentionally. Now, that being said, let's put you on the test. So I want you to be quick in your answers here. What are the numbers? Which one is bigger and what are the numbers? Go, go for it, quickly. Are they the same in terms of the, are they the same number? No, which one is bigger? Like if you look at them, which one is bigger? This one? The one at the bottom, let's put it this way. The one at the bottom, right? Still, is there someone who believes that these are equal? Yep, there are quite some people that believe that. Well, you sure? So, what about those one? What are the numbers? Quickly, quickly, don't think about it, don't think about it. People who read your charts don't know how to read your charts. What's that? One, two, three, four, the question marks only. What do you think? There are two, okay, both of them? Both of them, okay, anyone else? Both are below two, but the first one is? The first one is bigger, okay. Are you sure? <laughs> you are, someone was right already. So again, again, simplify those charts and please, please don't use 3D animations. 3D is kind of evil if you are able, because of the lights, if you are able to see this. 3D is evil. Please don't use 3D in your charts. If you want to kind of, if you want to push people towards a direction which is not the ethical <laughs> direction, that is up to you guys. I told you that that is not okay for you to do. From now on, whether or not you decide to use 3D, up to you. Okay, just up. To you. Now, I want to show you something else that I believe is a bit more interesting than, than the 3D. Obviously, we don't have to use it. Now, how many of you have heard about this thing that's called morph in PowerPoint? The left-hand side of the room is very much prepared. <laughs> what are you guys doing here? What's happening? Okay, so, so what is morph? Morph is something that's kind of we used already the word funky, so let's use it again. So it is something that's very, very interesting, let's put it this way. It exists in your transitions in PowerPoint. It is something that was introduced in 2016, then you have it in Office 2019, and you also have it in Office 365. Now, this technology is mind-blowing. I would say, in terms of presentations and also, as you'll see, in terms of presenting data and what you can do with it. Just to give you context, I was not planning to do that, but just to give you context of how this works, very quickly, like very, very quickly, so that you understand what we are going to do afterwards. So, the most stupid example possible, right? The most, like, very basic stuff. Transitions morph, right? Then, However, think, think about those things as your think about those things as your charts, and then those things, right? Right. So if all of those slides are morphed, morph works on the basis of repeating objects. So the first, so slide number one, slide number two, slide number three, slide number four, right? So 
having in mind that it works based, based on repeating objects. The object has to repeat between con two consecutive slides. Having in mind that, what you are able to do in your presentations, because you may want to hear Tony and say, hey, let's ban PowerPoint from our organization. Let's only use Excel. However, unfortunately for you guys, you know that that won't happen. So accept what's new in that tool and use it instead. So what is, pos what is completely possible for you to do nowadays is craziness like this. And I'll show it then to in, in the chart mode. So take a look at this one. So this is everything that you see here. By the way, that presentation took a lot of money from Lufthansa. Anyone from Lufthansa here? Thankfully. OK, so, uh, so this is everything that you see here is PowerPoint. right? And it's created in a way that you just copy paste objects. So now that you know about Morph, how are those clouds moving to the left hand side? Well, you just copy paste them on the next slide and just move them. right? Take a look at the position of the clouds. And you just hit Morph and it says, well, these are the same clouds as before. Just move to the left, figure it out. And Microsoft figures it out for you, which is beautiful if you think about it. <laughs> so then again, these, these ones were coming from the bottom to the Upper, to the upper part, to the middle part of the slide. Again, it needs to work on, a on the basis of repeating objects. So those objects have to exist on the previous slide. So do they exist on the previous slide? You bet you do, right? So that's why it pushes it towards the middle part of the next slide. So that being said, that being said, what about charts, right? What about charts? So this chart you already have seen. Now, this chart, this chart is completely a normal chart. So now that, you have, now that you know, and now you see something else in regards to PowerPoint that Microsoft internally even call the bank, bank, morph feature. That's a very interesting name if you think about it. A bank, bank, morph. Now that you know about this, what is possible for you to do with your charts, no matter what the chart is? Is it a pie, is it a pie? Is it a bar chart? Is it a pie chart? Whatever. What you are able to do is to play a bit. So take a look at what's going to happen now. So all of those movements are now completely possible for you to create in PowerPoint. This is not a wipe animation. For those of you who have used wipe, this is not wipe animation. The wipe does not work this way. It, you have a lot of trouble doing that in a, in, with wipe animation. This is a completely different story here. Look, obviously, you want to do such effects and such movements for a presentation that's slightly more important than the normal one, right? You're not going to push towards creating those effects for a, for a chart or for a presentation that's not that important. However, how was this created? How was this created? Well, again, you have to have repeating objects. Repeating objects. Objects. So in order for me to animate that chart in such a way, I need to again copy paste that chart. I need to go to the next slide, right? I need to go to the next slide. I still have to do it. Oops. Switching languages. So I need to copy paste the chart. Give me a sec. So that you see again that craziness. You have to paste it as again picture enhanced meta file. You have to stretch it out a bit on and on and on and on, right? And once you stretch it as, as much as you wish, you just go and start ungrouping it. Right click, group, ungroup. Microsoft says, are you OK? You say, yeah, sure. Then you go again and you ungroup it second time. And then every single thing becomes a separate object, a separate object. Now that I have separate objects, I can move them and I can play with them in any way that I like. So as you can see, as you will see here, let me just show you the context because I want to show you something else here. Uh, someone from Microsoft here is, did Kalin leave? Yes. Okay. So recording. Okay. You're okay. So you can report that as a bug. So 
when you when you I'm an MVP, I reported it already. Trust me, <laughs> so no worries. So uh, when you ungroup a chart up until today, not today, but up until the last few uh, weeks, I would say, when you ungroup it, every single bar was a separate shape, a separate shape. However, something happened, and now there are there are shapes that are grouped still. You see. This is one shape, or at least that's how Microsoft sees it, right? That's not normal. And because that's one big shape, I need to play with that big shape all together, which is not what I want, because I want each and every bar to be separate so that I can reconfigure it in the way that I like. So that's why you have to do tricks. However, that bar, I can play with it as in the, any way that I like, right? And the fact that I change the size then if I click Morph, it will go whoop, backwards. Now, the way I played with this is, if you carefully take a look at it, you see what the problem with the case is? While the bug is still ongoing, what you can do is just draw a shape on top of that shape. And this way, you have the repeating objects that you need. We are on the Balkans. We are in the Balkans. We like to figure this out, right? <laughs> we like to cheat the system. You have noticed it. So once you cheat the system, the second specific thing for you guys, I don't know if you uh, know it, but on the Balkans, the countries here on the Balkans, once they cheat the system, the other specific, the, there is something that's very unique for us here in this region that we really like to say how we cheated it. <laughs> like, it is incredible. Uh, it is incredible to see that. But still, again, this is something that I create on top of it. On top of it. And then, if I start playing with the second bar, that second bar is actually, you see? That second bar is actually the same shape as on the previous slide, and I just click Morph. Now, if something happens and this shape, for example, this shape that's here, does not morph, to the one that you want for some reason, because that's technology at the end of the day. What Microsoft did, and that is, the, that is what I was saying to you, that's the bang back more feature, is that nowadays, to give you the context of how this works in the beautiful presentation, I will delete that, sorry, I cannot look at this. Uh, so let me open that one. If you use Office, how many of you are Office 365 user, subscribers? That is now 60% easily, okay. So I don't know if you know, but there is a new feature inside of Morph that allows you to do the following. I'll delete that so that you understand the context. If, some, if at some place Morph doesn't work for you. So these are two separate objects, right? And they are different objects. So if I click Morph, that won't work, right? It just says, mm, I don't see repeating objects here. So what Microsoft introduced is if you go to the so-called, if you go to the arrange button, there we will find a selection, the so-called selection pane. This is for everyone who has friends who are designers who still believe in 2020 that in PowerPoint layers in Photoshop Illustrator, etc., and tools like this do not exist. Well, they exist. It's just that the designers do not know about that. So if you're on a dinner or at a party with a friend, of your, a friend of yours who is a designer, let him know about this and take a look at the reaction. Uh, I don't know if you remember that advertise, ad, advertisement of MasterCard back then, which was saying priceless at the end. But here, in order for me to morph those two objects, what I need to do, take a look, is I need to change the name. I need to change the name of the object to, has, to have Two exclamation marks at the beginning. That is telling you that whoever wrote that in Microsoft is a nerd. That is the pure logic that I was an IT guy, so I understand that. I understand that. So again, that is a nerdy one. So again, if I just say Excel days, in order for Morph to understand that those objects are the same, you have to copy paste that. Right? The names have to be the same, but the names should start with exclamation marks. And then you click Morph, and it figures it out. Right? And you can do a lot of things, a lot of things with that. So if you are 
if you are having troubles moving the elements, moving the text boxes, moving the shapes in your charts so that they understand each other, you will probably notice that some of my elements are with the exclamation marks, right? Because Morph was getting confused which text box is moving where. So that's why I'm saying this text box is that one. Morph them. And it figures it out. Right? So that is something that you can build with Morph nowadays. Obviously not for only for this chart, but it, it looks kind of interesting if you're asking me to have this smoothness. Then afterwards, I can, if I have the time, I can recreate the flow. I meaning recreate the order even. And you will see them going up, going down, etc. And it will look very, very fancy. Again, if you are having those technologies in your hands, use them. Now, the next one, the next one is when we talk about tables, you have seen a lot of tables today. I think you'll see a lot of tables in the upcoming, in the upcoming day. However, when we work with, one, with our clients, we normally see tables that look like this. Now, Microsoft is also in PowerPoint normally, by default, still, still has table styles that are not the best on the planet. Let's put them this way. Now, whether or not they are going to change them, we'll see. However, if you're working with a designer, I'm not a designer, just saying. However, if you're working with a designer or if you want to make your tables way better than before, and if you talk with a professional designer who has experience in how to build tables, you'll see that he is going to laugh at that. Right? He is going to immediately say, that's, that's so strange, we need to fix it immediately. Now, what the professional designer will do is, firstly, what they are going to do is ask, what is the most important thing in a table? And the answer will be the data, right? Surprise, surprise here. So if the data is the most important thing in a table, then what we, we want to do is remove everything else on its way. There is just a ton of color in these tables. Unfortunately, I cannot show you projects, our quant projects with tables, but you'll never see stuff like that. What you will see is way more simplified charts and uh, tables, and I will show you a few things here. Now, if I zoom in, I want to zoom in a bit here because the, there is a lot of lights here. I want, I want you to see that there are also column dividers here, right? Do you see them, kind of? Or should I zoom even more? So if I zoom in even more, you see the pixels? There are lines. So we, we divide the tables with very thin. A professional designer will always divide them with very thin lines that are, oh, by the way, also in a color that almost merges with the background. So if you're using black color, you're going to want a dark gray. If you're presenting or if you're building a document, a slide doc, meaning something that's consumed over email, and it is on a white background, you see something and you see the, the borders inside or outside being very light gray, so that they merge with the, the background because they shouldn't be a focus. So just to give you context of how that could work, because I'm not going to show you how to change the colors of the borders. So this one is this one, it's the same. And then you can fine tune even further. I don't know whether or not you see the differences, but let's try. So do you see the differences now? Which one, by the way, is better for you? Let me, that, that is a question that I really wanted to ask. So which one is better for you, this one or this one? When the numbers are right aligned. The second one, right? Because you, are, you got used from Excel. Because in Excel is this way, so you are expecting it to be this way. So what the designer will do is they are going to align the first row, the first column to the left hand side, and everything else, if it's numbers, to the right hand side, and they will remove any color that's on the table. Plus, what they may do also, I, let's see whether or not you are going to spot this difference again. I'll explain it to you. What happened? The font changed somehow. How? The, it's smaller, the font size went smaller. Why are designers going to do that? And I'm not going to show you how to lower the font size. That's not interesting, I think. Why are they doing it? Because there is a visual a design, they call it a visual hierarchy. If you have, how many of you have friends or family who are designers? 
You can now, anyone? No? You don't know designers? One person, two people, okay. Three, four, okay, you can now scare them with terminology after this session. Like, tell them about visual hierarchy, and they're like, <laughs> no, okay. Are you going to talk to me about visual hierarchy? So, the main idea of the visual hierarchy is that the, tie, the columns on top are the bigger, the biggest, meaning that they have a, most of the focus in the table because afterwards, they are, everything else is underneath them. So visually, everything else should be smaller. That's why you see those bolded and bigger, and then everything else becomes smaller in the table, not to mention the alignment. So if we go from here, and I then go here, which one would you consume? Is there, a, is there a question at all? Again, this is not that hard to do. It takes a bit of time from you to kind of fine tune even further, but for the important presentations live or for the important documents that you're sending to the CEO, CFO, whoever consumes that data, spend the time to remove, at least remove the colors, make sure that all of the fonts are the same fonts, like keep it consistent with the brand also. Now, I'm going to skip that one because it's lunch in the same time. And the last one that I wanted to show you that's coming from Ignite, the conference of Microsoft, that's very, very interesting, at least to me, is that Microsoft are nowadays pushing more and more, and not just Microsoft, to be honest, to accessibility, meaning people with various, uh, various, so how can we call this in English? Uh, help me out with this one. So with some form of disability to be able to consume a presentation or a document, right? No matter who you are, no matter what happened, you are equal with everyone else, so you can consume a presentation, the presentation itself. So if I show you this chart, together with you, we may not have any problem to consume that chart. Again, fake data, on and on and on, fake news. You know, <laughs> remember that one? Fake news. So, however, there is something that you may have heard about that's called col color blindness. Now, if I show that chart to somebody, how do I check whether or not somebody can understand this if, it, if he or she has color blindness? If I go to Windows and I call color filter, meaning go into adjust color filters, and I go and say turn on the color filters and use the grayscale, meaning black and white, if I go here, how would you know which one is which? Which is expenses and which is revenue? I don't know. Do you? I really don't. So in that, with that, that being said, can I do something about it so that everyone, if something happens, can consume that presentation, can consume that document. Well, one of the first things that I can do is take a look. I'm not going to switch the grayscale. Take a look. The same chart, if I just change and make change the chart type and make it with tick marks, do you see the, take a look, do you see the tick marks now? So now if I have some disability and I cannot see properly the colors on the screen, can I understand which line is which one? Yep, I can. I can. It's not that hard anymore, right? I can. And what's more, the next version of this or the next iteration of this is this version. Can I now understand which line is which one? Yeah, I can. Like direct labeling, these are manually created text boxes, but still, it works, right? What's that? Can so you mean which one? Before April? You are going to have to struggle to have it? How do, you, how do we fix it then? What do you think? The sizes of the line maybe? Or do we mix, do we mix those up then? Even. Whoop. Do we mix those ones? Even. Maybe. Maybe. However, it's more and more people are starting to think about those things and require them at events, conferences, across the people they work for and across their colleagues. So when you're building charts the next time, think also about things like this because it's getting more and more popular nowadays. And I, to be honest, it makes sense. Like, it really makes sense for everyone to start thinking in this way. How can we create 
everything that we present or everything that we prepare accessible for everybody. So, five minutes before the lunch. So, my computer is on another version now, let's see. So, to sum it up today, what you, what you saw are, first of all, the 3D stuff. Please. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. Let's go. It is 2020. Don't use 3D anymore. Or at least, if you're using it, know what's happening. And when you see a 3D chart, look for the potential discrepancies. The very unfortunate situation is that you are going to be seeing 3D charts in the media. And especially when there are elections. I don't know why they're doing it. I'm just saying that it's happening. And it's not only happening in Bulgaria. It's happening globally. So please don't go there. The second one that you saw is Morph. If you are having Office 365, try to kind of try to play with it because it can create some stunning not only charts, but presentations only also. Tables, remove the colors, keep, the, keep them consistent, alignments, sizes, the visual hierarchy. That will impress everyone that's around you, even though you're not a designer. I don't have to be a designer to lower the size of the font. That's not that hard, at least for me. Like, I don't think it's hard for you. And then the accessibility. More and more there will be people who are going to be asking you to, to prepare a presentation or to prepare a document that's accessible. And if you go to PowerPoint, and I believe in Excel also, you can go and right click and see out text. Have you seen, do, do we have this in Excel? The out text fields? So more and more this will be happening. So start thinking about this if you haven't started doing it already. So I hope this was useful. The next time you are building those charts, try to implement a few of those tricks together with every other trick that you're learning today because I also already learned for the hiding of the numbers. That was fancy, by the way. So try to implement those tricks because when you implement them, when you incorporate them in your presentations, at the end of the day, your presentations will, be, will at the end of the day, your presentation become more effective, right? Thank you very much, guys, for your attention. And you have two more minutes to go to lunch before actually the lunch starts.